Welcome to the garage guys. We got an exciting video today. Today we're going to show you our new rotary axis for our budget CNC plasma cutter. It's going to be an exciting video. Make sure you stay tuned. Well, we've got the parts all cut for the CNC tubing notcher adapter. Uh, you can see on some of the parts where we added score lines here where the bends are going to happen. It's going to make us bend those parts easier. So we've got the main uh, adjustment body, we've got the bearing assemblies, and then we've got the motor mount with the drive pulleys that are going to spin the tube. So we've got those all processed on the plasma cutter. If you take a quick look in on here, we do have a little bit of a length issue with our pierce delay. We're running a little too long, but that's just, um, we hadn't had a profile in for this metal, but we'll just shorten up that pierce delay and we won't get that little extra cut on these on the starts of some of these right here. So we've got the pieces. You saw them get plasma cut, cut out. Um, we did put bend lines on them. We just uh, were able to take them around the edge of the table and bend them and because we only left a uh, 3 sixteenths of a piece of a metal here we'll put a spot weld on each side to hold them firm but so we've got the pieces bent up uh, we've got the motor mount bent up we marked a center line down this piece of 30 inch uh, flat bar and we're going to put the bearings on the center line and we've made a mark where this pivot needs to be so we'll get that welded on and we'll drop this in and that's going to pivot up and down and sit on the tube and roll the tube. So we're, we're going to take this out to the garage and get it spot welded together. So we've got it out here and uh, we tacked on the bearing holders and we tacked on the main support. So, and then we've screwed on the bearings to the bearing holders. The only difficult part of this assembly is this half inch bolt. We have to drill a hole in it and then we tapped it to quarter 20. We didn't tap it all the way through and you'll see why in a second. So we mounted the motor and we mounted the bearings and we've bent up the pieces. So to assemble it, we just, um, we're gonna be using inch and a quarter to start. So we're gonna go through. Well, go through that bottom hole and put a knot on. And then we just have a full threaded quarter inch bolt with a thumb screw on it, a washer, and a uh, spring, and a washer, and then that threads right into that bolt we tapped. And that gives us pressure. And we didn't tap that all the way through so that when we tighten this, we can bottom it out and it stays tight in there. And then the belt. We just drop the belt on. It's a loose fit belt, and you'll see why in a little bit. And now we have a tension we can set on here. And when we set this up, these rollers, the smallest we set it up for was a one inch tube. So a one inch tube will fit in, a three quarter won't. And the reason, there's no reason to hardly notch a one inch tube, let alone a seven or a three quarter. You'll never need to notch that. So it'll go from It'll go from one inch all the way up to two and a half, three inches for this roller. And if we take a little bigger tube, we've got an inch and a half here. And we just put a little pressure on the spring. And now I can crank down the spring a little bit. Just get a little pressure on. And you can see when I turn this, it needs a little more pressure, the motor will turn. And then we're set up to change the tube. I just have to lift it up and slide it out. So we'll take this over to the machine and mount it on the machine. So we're over at the machine and we just set it in here and we did drill and tap some holes and we put it halfway in between the two on there. And the only, it's very important that this stays square to the main to the main gantry so this distance here has to be the same on both front and back so we measured those 
and we'll just zip these in and now we're ready to go. The other thing we did is we added a connector uh, if you come around and for that motor and we'll just unplug the uh, x-axis here and plug in the new x-axis which is the roller and now we're set up and ready to run. Okay, here's the first cut we're going to do. This is just going to be a straight zero degree cutoff. Okay, on this cut we're going to do a 90 degree notch, inch and a half tube to inch and a half tube. We'll see how we matched up. We've got a nice match. If you could pull it apart, Jackson, just look at the end. Let it focus. No cleanup to do at all, guys. Just a beautiful notch. Put it back together again. Looks great. So in this cut, we're going to do two different cuts. We're going to do a 15 degree and a 45 degree. And then we're going to do it on a 30 degree offset rotation. So we're going to show you how we're going to clock that on here. That's why we have the center line here. We're going to start with the first cut. We're going to put the nozzle right onto the uh, center line of the tube. Lost my belt there. get my nozzle on there or my nozzle on here and we were just running uh, two inch here so I need to tighten it up or inch and a half so I need to tighten up a little bit and drop my tip down And then we're ready to run the uh, first notch that we're going to do. A real deep 15 degree notch. So we'll take a look at it. We'll watch this go. And that's the type of a cut that you know you won't be able to get inside of a tubing knocker. Look at that nice cut we have there. So beautiful. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to move it forward and put it back on the bend line. So I'm just going to bring this forward, move it back to the silver, to our silver mark, and now we're set back up. So, I don't want to get into the math too much, but in order to clock something here, um, we're using inch and a quarter, so we got to change that over to millimeters because we're uh, the G-code sender we're running in millimeters, so we have to times it by 25.4, and then we have to times it by pi, 3.14, to get the diameter, and that gives us uh, 99.4, 695 millimeters diameter. Well, then we have to change that to degrees, so we take that number and we divide by 360 degrees. So every degree is 0.277 millimeters on our G code that we're sending to the machine. So if we want to clock that 30 degrees, we take 30 degrees times by 0.277 and that gives us 8.31 millimeters. So we'll set a home position, we'll clock it, or we'll start here, we'll clock at that 8.13 millimeters, we'll reset the home, and then we'll, we'll run it and it'll offset that by 30 degrees. 
Now, which way do we clock it? Forward or backwards? Well, that depends. If you're building a cross cart, you're building a roll cage, you're building something like that, you're probably making two, and they're gonna be the opposite. One will be clocked forward, one will be clocked backwards. That's the easiest way. Just do two, one each way. You don't have to think about it, okay? So we'll get started on the second cut. So first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna clock this back from zero to eight point three one. And if we can see the rotation, a little tough to tell, but the line's no longer lined up anymore. So are you ready, Jackson? Yeah, I'm just gonna change the So he's just Pulling up the other job, now we're going to run that 45 degree notch, offset 30 degrees. And there we go, we grab the pliers, <laughs> but so we got great cut. If we look at the other, the 45 degree side, too hot to hold. So when we cut that notch. Uh, somebody screwed up on the G-code and the 45 ended up here. So he needed to run the inverse, he needed to flip it over, but we got the tail end up there that's clocked the 30 degrees from that line if you see that. So if we go back to here, we can see the line is right there, 30 degrees off the center. So when he wrote the G-code, he just flipped the, uh, the notch the right way, but I think you guys get the point with this. So we pulled that 15 degree notch out and we uh, lining it up here, take a look at it. Nice beautiful cut. We had to run it under waters for a second. It was a little too hot but gives you a great option. You could never run that cut on a hole saw. And we've got a beautiful, we even got a little bit of a gap in here uh, for running a bead. You know the way the bevel is cut on there. So there's no grinding, there's no finishing, it's just a perfect notch with that. So uh, we're really happy with this. So another advantage of this rotary axis is we can complete a whole tube. In this case we're going to do a very short tube, something you couldn't fit in a tube notcher. On the one end it's going to have a 90 and the other side a 45 and the whole tube's only going to be less than 5 inches long. So we're going to, we're going to run this job. So Jackson's got it, and beautiful notch on that end, beautiful notch on that end, and it's a complete tube, ready to be put in a frame. So guys, with the tubing notcher, the key to the tubing notcher that we have here is that we're running the same motor and the same gear pitch on this motor that we run on the x-axis, so nothing needs to change. None of our settings in our, in our box on our stepper drivers, none of that changes because if this moves one inch, this moves one inch. It's the same belt, cog, the same gear. Along with that guys, if you were running a program like Bentec, where it spits out cut wrappers, and sometimes the cut, wrapper, cut wrappers are clocked, you could pre-notch all of your tubes before you bend them. I think that's a huge advantage. Because when you, when you, if you do the bend first, you still measure where to notch from the end of the tube. So just do the notch first. Get your bend marked on the tube close, then do your notching, then do your bending. And now, the best part about this notcher is, for those who have been following the channel, you know that we have plans available for this CNC plasma cutter. Now, that's available with it. So, those of you that have purchased our plans already and have your unit ready, you can plasma cut out these parts and make your tubing notcher. Go back to where you downloaded your files, you'll see another tab for the tubing notcher to get the plasma files and a bill of material for that. This is all included in your budget plasma cutter uh, build. 
So with that, guys, we'd like to thank you for watching the video. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe.